Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here with JB79. This is episode 10 of the Leonis Report. JB, how's it going, man? I can't believe we're at 10 already. These have been flying by, so I'm doing good. Actually, there's a, a unit coming in this week that I'm pretty stoked for, so yeah. Me too. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about it in the beginning here. How about, how about you? How's, how's everything yeah. going? Honestly, things are going well. You know, weather is turning up nicer. Other than that, real life stuff's going work good. Work is good. Traveling a little bit. War of the Visions. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the game at the moment just because of, uh, obviously, there's like a lot of things like out of balance in terms of like how good the power creep of the game has been. That being said, like, I really do feel like there's some fun balance at the moment where there's like way more rainbow teams that we've ever seen. We're actually seeing like just new stuff and, and obviously see you have things like limited guild war and uh class match and now we have the five time you know bonus shards in in class uh, or you know what do you call it rank match and we have arena week next week this is i feel like there's a lot of fun stuff to play with these units that we don't normally get to so it's been it's been good yeah definitely things have like opened up a bit with the job vision cards we've kind of reached a critical mass at least with a couple of the different groups especially fist teams i think have been as advertised you know definitely viable definitely very good Definitely. Well, at the very least, I, I think it's been good that a lot of people have finally had a chance to like not be perfect three vision cards and all three units and they go and they play and they're like, oh, you know, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, I think you need to kind of like tear down that wall. And uh, I think we're kind of getting there. So yeah, yeah you don't, you definitely don't need the whole collection. For, no. um, I mean, just go with, I mean, I think the one like really key one is the FMA card with the agility and the unit resistance. Definitely. So I, I tried to urge everybody to, to grab that one if you're at all interested in not only fist, but also uh, Pierce teams. Yep. A hundred percent. Yes, for sure. So good. Well, we'll kick things off here at Battlegrounds of Arja with uh, the first topic of the night. We're going to be talking about Reagan's release. He's the new ice unit that does have some fire properties to him in line with the lore of his original FFBE design. Obviously kind of a creative unit. We don't get many of those. Sakura kind of comes to mind for many as the first. Uh, did you? I know you already did like a pretty deep dive on him a, a while ago on the first look. Uh, any thoughts now that we're kind of caught up? Uh, are you excited? You know, what are you looking forward to? One, one group that I've seen kind of a lot of development development in JP, like especially kind of culminating with Final Fantasy V recently, is this Sword A or Red Mage group. Hmm. I think there's a lot of nice, you know, units, a lot of nice options kind of within that, that particular group. And, and, and Reagan, you know, definitely is is uh, is one of them. So yeah, after after we get uh, Reagan, we're going to get Howlet. He's also in that same group. And then Ferris. And obviously right. all those units are also kind of part of this ice and water connection as well. So uh, there's some of that kind of uh, going on in JP right now. They they just announced Dark Shiva, which is yeah. another ice water card, which is uh, super interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, I think Reagan's going to be kind of a big part of this push towards that that dual element. Sure, I think that you know out of the two upcoming ice units, Howlet and Reagan, I think Reagan is the one that I think is a little bit better. He's a really solid bruiser, really good against slash and strike damage both. He doesn't do like you know, lights out kind of damage. He's not right. going to be the next uh, Bradley, but he's got very serviceable damage. He does have an imperil. He's got, I think he trades some of that out for a little bit more supportive things that he can do for the team. He does have Chakra in the Monk sub job, which that, that skill I think is actually uh, pretty underrated for what it can do. It gets a pretty nice heal, especially with the healing power that this unit has. That yeah. thing's going to be popping off for, I, I would say <laughs> six or 7,000 health, so. Yeah. No, definitely. There is a lot to like. He does have a ton of utility when it comes to uh, element res up as one of his teammate buffs. He always has things like dispel courage. He's also got a defense break, dispel haste and protect. Uh, there's a lot of good things there that, you know, you can pair him with a variety of other units and intertwine them. I do think it's very interesting. The, uh, you know, matchup game that he brings in terms of both ice and fire, where obviously he is he is technically an ice unit. That's where the elemental strengths and weaknesses go off of. But he does have that one ability that is an increased ice killer and wind killer, which essentially makes it a 225% mod, which is also his courage dispel. So, like, it's kind of cool that they've added in this uh, hedge here, whereas we do encounter and build some of these rainbow teams that you kind of have, like, an X factor in your team. I know you and I had spoke a little bit earlier about the, like, the synergies between Reagan and Bradley. And I think that's a really cool one. We're obviously seeing a lot of Bradley, so people just kind of throw a win team at Bradley's face and Reagan kind of come in here now same 
job, you know, equipment type as Bradley is, and he's able to complement that and stave off just throwing wind at them. And he does things that Bradley can. He can dispel protect, which is one thing that you can mitigate for Bradley. He does the courage dispel, whereas Bradley's the re-raise dispel. Uh, Bradley doesn't have any innate AoE resistance in terms of like a buff, and so uh, Reagan can bring that to it. There's like so much overlap that I think is really cool. And you mentioned the imperil, kind of the same thing. Like he's got that 38% slash imperil and the limit break. There's just so much uh, interesting overlap there that uh definitely looking forward to it i think a lot of people probably will end up passing on him just because of the economics of things and fire is so good right now i think a lot of people will look at ice and just kind of you know 10 foot pole not go near it but he is a really solid unit overall yeah especially with uh kefka coming in as well too pretty soon is a very very strong uh, mage i agree I, I love the that uh the elemental resist buff that he brings ice wind and dark uh three very strong pvp elements absolutely you know we don't see wind quite as much right now just because they're kind of lagging behind a little bit on some of their awakenings mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of uh, by design from from gumi they've kind of um they knew that i think after how things developed last year that you know glassy and Sadali that was pretty tough not to crack for pretty much any element other than ice so mm -hmm. i think they purposely have delayed them and they're actually going to be coming up soon in jp so i'm very interested to see what happens there but if they end up being very powerful this uh, this tech here from reagan could be pretty important um for any kind of upcoming win meta that, that we might see in the future yeah absolutely could he seems like a really good unit obviously without again the power creep of the game these new units are all kind of primed to fit together for what they want to do for balancing so you know there's a lot of really good ice units you look at ice slashers historically that was kind of their 1.0 before they went deep into the missile and i don't think that the ice slashers really stand up to the current uh phase of the game like they might have used to where people think of like Oren and Laswell, Gilgamesh, even like Agrius theoretically, and I just don't think they keep up, obviously. So, yeah, for better or worse, if you want to play the game, you're gonna have to play the game. The other, the other thing too, not only the uh, I mentioned earlier the ice water connection, but he's a, I think a very nice part of uh, you. Are, you mentioned Bradley, kind of that earth ice connection, and we do know that Dark Golem is coming and yeah. Diallo is coming. So that's another thing where, you know, he can just line up, give wind resistance to Dialdo. All of a sudden, he's a lot harder to take down. I believe there's wind resistance as well on the Dark Golem Esper. So, you know, yep. you can start being very tricky with some of those teams you put together and make it very difficult to, you know, teams that, that might just throw wind at it and, and try to counter it that way. So yeah. I, I like it a lot for kind of the, uh, the different games you can play that way. I would agree, definitely. And then just in terms of honorable mention, he does have a specific weapon coming out for him where... Uh, it's essentially defense penetration of 20. He does also have slash attack res pen, or at least the weapon. I'm sorry, let me just take a step back. The weapon condition is that if you are a fire and ice unit, this is actually kind of cool visually so everyone can see this. This is, is kind of new. The condition is element related, where if you are a fire or an ice unit, you will get slash attack res pen, but you will also get CT 200 when your HP falls below 20%. And obviously you get that defense pen 20. So this actually is a, a very interesting sword for both of those elements. Actually, I, I kind of like it for King Mont to get the CT up and then it gives him some penetration there. So yep. if you're playing him maybe like more evasive where you're, you're not worrying as much about defenses and you want him to, to do a little bit of damage, um, you know, this is a good sword for that. And you know, with, with those different cards that you can stack on him, like you know, his damage isn't really laughable at that point. So Well, and you see more and more now the tanks that have been released. And even if they're not true tanks, even like the tankier characters they're getting way more defense penetration than those initial tanks did so like you think characters like alphonse he immediately comes to mind with that 50 defense pen buff and like there's a couple others that uh the creep has made it so that defense penetration is through the roof and king mont does not kept up with that so to throw this sword on there then you get like the dark effort vision card combine that uh, there's a lot of good things to potentially throw in there at him. He, he definitely, you know, chains well. He's got the slash and perils with the teammates. So uh, King Mont is is eating good. He is aging very well. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to see more weapons like this. I, I like this kind of precedent they've set with maybe some some elemental, make a really strong sword that can just be used by, you know, only a couple different elements. That's very interesting. Yep, absolutely. Well, and we've seen this trend too, where as they make these weapons, they've 
obviously taylor made them for certain characters or they'll give two to three buffs on it and there's a lot of good things about that where for like trust don't passive synergy it essentially is another form of power creep where you're giving an innate advantage to these characters by having them you know have way more trust own passive uh, economy if you will and by doing it this way instead by going for the element advantage it makes it less reliant on like oh the sword is only good for this character and instead you get to kind of like you know use it a little more um, widely which i just think is obviously a, a good thing for the larger player base too yeah yeah i'm, I'm a big fan they, they seem to kind of sprinkle them in here and there there's a couple more that are going to be upcoming too that, that i really like that give some area resistance to certain classes so definitely a fan fan of the kind of more broad upgrading of some older classes and units that they that they do with these most definitely and he does come with a vision card too which we'll talk about some of the strategy as to why they pushed this vision card up a week where they typically stagger them a week later we'll kind of talk about why in just a second but in the meantime we'll look at the card in particular so it's just we'll call it the reagan vision card at the moment uh, overall the the party is 20 crit damage 20 slash res but the most interesting me mechanic which we've kind of tried to digest sect a little bit is the 36 percent element chain resistance we've seen that with alphonse a little bit i've noticed it i still can't exactly quantify it we've kind of ballparked it if you will i do still want to take a deeper dive but this does seem to be a good card for him where he obviously has some of that elemental chain resistance innately and just by the nature of where the game is going with chaining in general this seems to be a new interesting like damage mitigation mechanic so uh, I, I mean there's a lot of good faces to see on this card are you pulling for this do you, do you think it's a good one so i i'm definitely going to pull for it I, I pull for all the vision cards the thing that i found out about elemental chain protection is it's one of those stats that does get an enhanced value in this in the secondary slot so it's not like the standard 50 percent or whatever i believe it's like 75 or 80 percent nice so this is this isn't really a card i think that i would really use as a primary so uh, that kind of perked my interest um you know when i found that out at least according to like the word of calc builder and, and that's generally accurate you know in terms of those percentages so yeah in terms of Reagan, like he does have that passive for the 40% that he can have always on. So if you had this like in a secondary and you were getting like another, say, you know, 25 or 30%, uh, that, you know, that's that's pretty solid just to have that, you know, walking in and not having to buff at all. Because that's one thing that I've seen with, with Alphonse is that he gets that big buff for 80% and then, you know, after a couple of turns that wears away and he's not nearly as tanky. So I like this quite a bit for, for Reagan in particular. Me too. And I, you know, when I typically look at these cards, you obviously look for characters that you use fairly frequently. And I think there's a lot here, obviously not only just characters that we use frequently, but a lot of future units as well. You already mentioned Ferris, you mentioned a uh, Howlet as well, where those are, are on the way. But even just speaking more generally, you know, you can see characters like Bradley, you have the new Light Stern, you have some of the, you know, interesting meta light characters like Sylvie and Jaden and Elena, where obviously, yeah, they probably aren't surviving much when you're chaining them down anyway. But uh but yeah. sometimes that is the difference. Like that's that's why I just need to do a smaller secondary look at it. Celeste obviously for water as well. Either way, there's a lot of good foundational pieces here for characters from what I can tell. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of tanks uh, on this list, which, you know, I think that they obviously will tend to benefit probably the most from, from that chain protection, especially if you can stack it up with any other, you know, innate value that they have or, or some other buff. Uh, we have seen in, in JP that the, the chain protection has started coming in on party buffs uh, with um, coming in with uh, Lena. So yep. that's another, another thing to kind of keep in mind and, you know, something else you can play with along with the card yeah absolutely and that seems prime for it where you bring up that good point of the sub slot uh this retaining most of its value means that it's really to help your tankier characters that uh it's you know the, the extra stats are nice obviously everyone wants some slash res and crit damage is a nice little you know, value add but it's really just about making sure that your tanks can do their job functionally in the post third anniversary where we're just seeing like crazy amount of damage and new like you know chains and whatnot they did announce a limited bestowed buff on the card too for Reagan, and he's going to get another. Uh, they didn't give the numbers uh, like like usual, but probably going to be like ten percent attack and and ten percent accuracy. Would be nice if it was up to fifteen percent accuracy. I would uh, would not uh, yeah turn turn that away. No, definitely. I mean, I just did my my stat analysis of him earlier, looking for kind of some holes, and accuracy does seem to be kind of one of those holes where he's not one of those units that gets the extra thirty percent on his attacks. He's not a unit that has guaranteed hit uh, in his kit. And ice in general, and obviously we talk about like um, getting out of the mono element, but ice has no 35% luck vision card. Their accuracy card is the Odin vision card, which is a good, you know, buff. But when you talk about like chaos Odin versus regular Odin, it's kind of hard to make regular Odin work. 
as uh, you know as well. And so that seems like a legitimate hole in him that, yeah, a little extra accuracy. And there's precedent for that. A lot of these inaccurate characters. Kyo is one of them. Uh, Zoma is another one. Those vision cards that came out with the unit bestowed was actually a very sizable amount of accuracy that changed the complexion of the character. So, yeah, I could absolutely see them doing that. Yeah, that's uh, that's one thing I noticed with Reagan as well. He does have the Nightblade passive, which which helps him out uh, a bit. But uh, yeah, he he only has one 100% hit in his kit from the monk uh, job. You're right. That's and it's very it's very limited range and kind of limited in its damage too. I think it's a low low modifier. So. That's correct. Um, I mean, in terms of evade units, uh, sometimes that can be good enough. But uh, the other thing that I would say, that I would kind of say is at least right now the evade meta is kind of around fire, and at least for Reagan, I mean, you're you're going to lose that pretty much, you know, anyway. That's a really so, good point. That is a very good uh, point. So, maybe if water or light or earth kind of ever come back there, that uh, might be more of a concern for him. Definitely. Well, all right, throw him in the party and let someone else do the job and let him buff and be a happy man just following behind. Yeah, so. <laughs> you can spam chakra. <laughs> Right. <laughs> hey, you know what? That actually has some value. That's like actually that's something that I've come around to with the new uptick in fire evade is realizing the upsides of these non-damaging attacks. There's actually a fair amount of TP based attacks that I'm really a fan of and enabling that I never would have formerly because of what it happens when you have a zero percent hit chance. And I think of even characters I, I brought up. Uh, I think this is Ed Elric was one of the first I was looking at where. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was Alphonse, actually. Since Alphonse's uh, AI is so inaccurate, he has that one guaranteed hit, but his stun grenade ability on his, like, main sub job is a really good ability. And if he can't hit you and he just spams that, like, that's actually a super valuable status element to throw on there. And there's a couple other characters and, that I was thinking of, but I just mentioned Ed and Resol, but they're so accurate, they don't use them the same. But, uh, yeah. you know, we've... We've always seen arithmeticians do it with AoE disable, but there's no reason why these other characters can't do it too with their TP abilities. So you bring up a really good point with the the chakra spam. Yeah, the the one thing that I that I wonder too is if he'll use that kind of in between strikes, like in Guild War, mm -hmm. uh, like on a turn one, maybe run over and heal a teammate. Because that would I, I haven't um, really tested out Resol to see if she does that, but I assume it would work the same way for her as uh, you know if if it uh, if the situation arises. If he does, that is exceptionally valuable to give regen and restore the hp that it would be something yeah. else yeah so good all right well that's basically all we wanted to talk about for reagan obviously we have our own you know little of uh, character reviews and videos coming out that uh, i'm sure will be out in the near future i know you've done your future look already on him but we do want to talk a little bit about the unit awakenings that are also coming this week uh, and in line with reagan being uh, his vision card being pushed up a week we think there's something going on here with a global exclusive <laughs> unit i know you mentioned i think it's your theory obviously we're pushing forward the vision card because of something with the global exclusives next week i mean do you have any thoughts on that in particular it, it seems like they're trying to line up the schedule to kind of um that, that we've seen this happen in the past where they've they condense a week and uh, usually there's some like built-in weeks for us anyway because you know the, the jp will get units later that that we got like some originals so but yeah it seems like i, I don't i don't know what other reason i'm like, there that, that they would push it up other than to kind of make some room for for an exclusive so maybe that means addison is is finally going to come maybe in the next week or two i guess we'll have to stay tuned if there's any video coming next sunday night <laughs> most definitely <laughs> i i'm uh, at this point, I'm just excited to have her come into the game. Like, we've talked about it for so much. I, I mean, I just, like, get it over with. Like, rip the bandit <laughs> off, put her in, do something fun with the new dancer job. If she's not a dancer job, the biggest swing and a miss in Gumi history for... I mean, that's a lie. It's not the biggest <laughs> swing and a miss, but... <laughs> Exaggeration. But uh, either way, on the topic of global exclusives and of FFBE... Uh, they did so before before oh, we actually jump into that one on the Addison Ray thing, I mm. have one sort of tinfoil theory that I'll I'll throw into the oh, thing there. Let's tinfoil. I'm, I'm with you. I'll put my hat on. Too. I, I I absolutely believe that we were supposed to get Addison the week that Keo came. Because that just came out of completely out of left field. That was a unit that was already sort of designated for JP. He came there only a few weeks later. It, it was really out of the blue. And it seems to me like with all the, you know, the, the Addison stuff had already been going on for a while. Wouldn't you want to get those players in like during the big celebration events where we have another, you know, uh, big collaboration coming in with Full Metal Alchemist. Very good for new players to kind of get in at that time. And 
you know, maybe some of them are interested in, in some of those properties too. So it, it seems really weird to me that, that they're going to have her come now. And that was kind of their original thought, like after all of that stuff is over. So that's, that's kind of my, my thoughts uh, behind it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm on board. Cause at this point, if you were here for the Addison Ray, you know, attention, however many few it may have been, uh, you're probably poor right now with all the busy you've spent. So the, I mean, then again, maybe that's what Gumi wants. Maybe they want you to be poor. So you throw the money in there to get Addison. If, if that's like your, your jam for coming to the game. So <laughs> maybe, maybe it's all according to plan, all according to Keikaku, you know? Yeah. There, there is still the copium that she could be a free unit. So. I think she could be. I see no reason why she couldn't be a uh, free. Yeah. I'll be honest. Free units. People are always very happy about them. And like rightfully so silver lining, you should be, but the cost to max a unit goes far beyond just getting them for free. Uh, that's almost yeah. worse sometimes. Oftentimes, it, that's a really nice thing when you pity a unit that you can pull all those shards immediately. Like, even though it's obviously not economically spending-wise, uh, if you pull a unit immediately or get them for free, you still have to acquire a 1,000 shards to MA2 them and then another 120 to 140 them. And then if you want to do any reincarnation, like, forget about it. It's a huge expense still, so free or not. Uh, I, I think it would be a good move for them to introduce a unit now that's is very good at kind of pushing back a little bit against Brad and Sephiroth. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we were talking about this a little bit before we hopped on the podcast, but those units are just so clearly head and shoulders above all the other kind of damage dealers right now that uh, it's it's kind of, you know, stars versus scrubs right now when in terms of those guys. So it's true. Um, I, I think it would be kind of cool to, to uh, introduce something to kind of put that in check a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And we've theory crafted about her bef job potential before. I have copium for what they're going to do with her. I think they would hopefully try to get pretty unique. But then again, I think a lot of people would be turned off by making Addison Ray a very meta unit in War of the Visions. I know there's one side of the fence that are, you know, want just good units. Doesn't matter who they are. And there's another side of the fence that's saying, like, all right, like, Put, put in the game, but I don't want to see her at top guild war yeah. everywhere. Like, you know, there's, uh, we'll see what it's they do. It's easier for them to forget about it if, if she's not good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, all right, cool. Well, well, on that note, we'll kind of segue to the unit awakenings there. We do have several of them that are FFB related that got pushed forward. I know Charlotte was notoriously one of them. I feel like Sakura was one. I could be wrong, though, but regardless, we have, uh, what, five big name, uh, unit awakenings for transcendence we have selma coming as well eileen yeah. eileen was pushed uh, pretty far forward as well oh, i think she came enough. like right around um maybe dialdo or just after dialdo in jp so got that's it. like at least a, that's at least a month or two early got it uh, in terms of the five uh urs we'll talk about ayaka first who she's getting 20 percent magic 15 percent magic res and she's getting a buff to her kiraga where she'll give 25 crit evade to that as well little lackluster in my opinion for an ma2 yeah i mean a transcendence yeah i mean she's she's already pretty good like she's she's uh she's definitely usable yeah i do like kind of enhancing she she already has kind of enhanced kiraga with the ap that it restores today yeah so adding on that the crit evade uh, she can already put on crit evade you know at the beginning like with region if you have that on uh, turned on and this is kind of can get you can continued on into the fight and keep that going so that's that's kind of interesting the other two buffs are just kind of whatever like yeah. a little bit of magic and magic resistance nobody really cares no <laughs> no no if, if i had to guess and this probably is like the best way i could silver lining this is that by giving the 20 percent magic and that crit evade the hope is that she doesn't heal bot as much because she is and that's her job and that's fine that it is but you want to be really good at it if you know what i mean and if she doesn't have the magic stat to replenish the health pools that exist now or if the crit damage you know depletes enemy or depletes ally hp too quickly uh obviously just allowing her to heal more freely is a, a good thing because that's what she's supposed to do so the magic res 15 percent is kind of a whatever slap in the face for she'll tie it and everything <laughs> else but but concept conceptually i think i kind of get it it's yeah. like the one damage that she's good at resisting so they're just kind of doubling down on that i agree i, I would like it if she kind of had less turns that she had to heal because she does have a couple of good buffs yeah with the the defense pen and the damage absorb that's a really nice one so uh, i she, think she it's could, huge yeah she could throw that out kind of in the mid fight that'd be pretty nice absolutely or even just if it's a random holy like you it doesn't have to be all the time but seeing a support being able to randomly contribute some damage once in a while uh obviously you like to see it and she never really gets that opportunity so um yeah either way temperance expectations ayaka actually still is used uh pretty widely in my opinion in a lot of stuff so well-timed i guess it's not the worst 
Uh, the next one, though, you mentioned is Eileen, and she is getting a very necessary 20% agility, uh, 20 defense pen as well, and her big 120 ability, Impulse Thrust, is getting the mod increased all the way up to 300%, which also has the unit imperil on it as well. So that's really just kind of like a, you know, absolute blast to whoever she's hitting that with. You think it's enough to kind of bump her up anywhere? So the, the agility, that's going to get her like 10 agility. So that, that's really nice. The defense pen, like sh they really shafted her on her MA2. Yep. I think she they only gave her 20 before. So this kind of gets her up to the, the modern standard of 40, get up to like 60 with some gear. So that's that's good. That uh, you know, Pierce is still a weakness for a lot of units out there. So you can take advantage of that in certain situations. And she's always had a pretty good attack value. I, I think that this doesn't do anything to address her AP issues, which has always been one of the biggest flaws for her. Uh, the job doesn't, the Lancer job really doesn't have any good way to gain any AP. No. I think that they gave her maybe some initial AP. So maybe if you combine that like with the uh, the, the spear that That's has weird. the initial AP, you have to give up a little bit of the uh, the earth uh, spear's damage, but could be worth it. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's pretty good. I mean, she's a, she really hasn't seen any use, I think, since Orlando was around. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe with the kind of Earth Spear game picking up, she can see some light. I I'm hopeful. I don't think it's enough though uh, for the reasons you mentioned that uh, the AP issues. That's like such a old problem to have. Every unit has ways to get around that now. And even though the attack stat's pretty high, Pierce resistance right now is at an all time high. And Pierce damage, although that's kind of Earth synergy, they don't like one trick it like they used to and so i you know eileen obviously does also have the soldier sub which certainly does go a long way uh for kind of getting that damage in there but regardless the 20 percent agility although you mentioned 10 agility points i think she's still so far behind um i don't think it actually really does much it's a good upgrade quite honestly but not good enough to to make her a viable play for i think most things yeah she has, she also doesn't really have much for survivability either like no. her hp is below average actually for for the modern so oh oh it's horrendously bad hold on oh I'll, I'll i'm actually made, i'm releasing a video about this uh this week i did another update on my evasion versus crit evade i'm sorry my evasion versus effective hp uh relationship and yeah she's like the worst in the game it's really <laughs> bad yeah yeah but, she's uh, only like around 34 or 3500 hp so horrendous and nate but uh, either way, we won't beat a dead horse any longer. <laughs> uh, Charlotte is also getting an upgrade here. She's getting 20% slash resistance, 20% magic resistance, 15 defense, and then an upgrade to protect and shell where it's going from 25% to 40%. Um, there's a lot there. That's I think that's an above average amount of things going for a, a transcendence ability. I know Charlotte's kind of fallen by the wayside, and obviously Alphonse has taken a huge leap forward there you think this does anything to kind of change that dynamic at all uh i mean i think alphonse is still better she is today and she will be even more so tomorrow with the uh, be the much better magic tank so if the the meta starts leaning more magic or you know maybe you have you have a specialist team that's just kind of you know there to to defeat magic teams like she excels in that role I, I I really like the upgrade to protect and shell because unlike a barrier, like the dis, the dispels for those are a little bit more rare. <laughs> Obviously, we saw Reagan was getting that, so that's that's kind of interesting. But in the, in the grand scheme of the game, there's not nearly as many characters that can get rid of that than than barriers. So yep, forty percent cut off right off the top is is really really nice. I would agree. I think it's a great upgrade. I don't think it's going to do much to necessarily shift the needle, but this is a very good upgrade. She will definitely benefit from it. Um, Slash Res obviously competes with the modern damage dealers that we're seeing. And uh, to me, this is one of those characters that, you know, your more casual players are probably pulling. And if you're not, you know, being really sweaty at the top end of the game, Charlotte's still like one of the best tanks you can go for. Uh, outside of it but in terms of the permanent pool even i think overall the defense is nice too where it does not make her just that one trick magic tank either there's a it's a good thing for her survivability so yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of what they did she does still have like some decent utility too like she's got the lightning in peril Huge. and the uh, the counter seal as well yep so yeah uh, yeah i like it i'll probably awaken her I, as, as I can get a spare antler. <laughs> I'll say I might. She's probably one of those ones that I'll, I will, but not immediately. Probably on a need-only need, need only basis, but yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. 
And then another unit who is getting an upgrade is Sakura. She's getting a decrease to both kinds of cast times, 250 down to both. She's also getting defensive 15, which actually was one of her original niches. She was one of the few mages upon release that was like anti, not anti-physical, but like skewed way more uh, chunky on the defense side than most people. So they're kind of leaning back into that. And then her ability that's getting the upgrade is the Quick Thunder's Light. It's going to increase her agility by 20% for three turns. And the mod of that ability will increase by 60% if the enemy has haste or an ap restore so any thoughts on on sakura here really really nice upgrade for her they if you look at her ma2 they've almost like kind of doubled what, what she got there like they got defense and cast time reduction there she's getting it again so she's going to be at 40 base defense walking yeah. in she's going to be at 55 percent reduced casting time and I love punishing some of those effects that are so kind of, you know, meta with the, the haste, especially yep. just being able to light somebody up um, and punish them for try, trying to uh, to use that. I, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, she's got she's she's still a great character, like really, really good character, especially when you consider 70 cost. Her survivability, like despite the defense, you know, like we said, the, the defense pen is still very much out there. She's still against the Bradleys and Sephiroth of the world. She's she's going to fold unless she's got, um, you know, some elemental resistance going on. Yep. But uh, she, as, as we saw with Reagan, she's kind of the original dual element character. She's got the lightning and lights going on. So I'm, I'm a fan of this one too. I, I've always liked Sakura. Me too. Uh, her, her health pool, unfortunately, is just so, so small that I agree. Even the defense that's there, the defense pen, she'll just get, you know, tapped by a lot of things. But I know from a limited Guild War perspective, when it comes to countering dark, she is like a big cog for what VIP typically does, where, uh, you know, light has that great, like, magic resistance piercing synergy with uh, Valfor and whatnot and obviously her with uh, another magic unit which when you consider limited guild war options there's a couple you could pick from but Sakura does exceptionally well and again you consider Sephiroth yes he will absolutely smoke her but uh, magic's kind of his one big chink in the armor too so she does particularly well and, and I think uh, these obviously great things to make her do that more consistently. The one thing that I was I was kind of um, theory crafting her a little bit. One thing that has always been kind of tricky with her is if you want to use her uh, elemental resistance buff and the cast time. And yeah. sometimes if you're trying to move and then put that under your tank, the tank will then move away and then she has to cast it again. Yep. If you use the Trousseau card, uh, which for light it gives uh, 100 cast time reduction. Yes. That puts her at 65% and she now one ticks even that spell. So uh, I think that's that's maybe something something there that you could do. I was just kind of thinking about it. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Honestly, I absolutely think it is because when you, I mean, when you talk about movement for her, you absolutely have to make her stay back just a little bit. You cannot have her anywhere remotely near the front line or she will get one tap. So if you can't lean into that teammate buff reliably, you're going to have a hard time with her AI. So if you can one tick that, you know, make her move horizontally, throw the bow tie on because it's got some flexibility and it's, you know, range in aoe i think you have a real case to be made there for like some real smart ai moves. it's not a bad card for uh countering dark either because it does have a, a dark resist bestowed on it too excellent so. point you're right good good observation i like it all right and then the last of the ur units here is dark fina who obviously is very prevalent and has been for quite some time i know we uh talked a while ago and were relatively unimpressed by horror ma2 i'm sorry by her transcendence and obviously now that we're kind of in the moment we can gauge that with fresher eyes she is getting accuracy of 15 percent magic attack of 15 and then her sorcery strike is getting an extra benefit where it's going to reduce counter chance by 100 percent to that unit it affects do you still feel the same kind of unimpressed by it or do you think it's actually aged well i i think it's just it it's not that good like i mean it, it's just that she is still good and like she still can be used that her just getting the 140s you know eligibility and getting a, some more stats and her element is, is obviously very good it's getting better with raf coming down down the pipe yep accuracy obviously that that's super helpful like she can hit evade units like she can be built hyper accurate this helps her do that without maybe you can you know trade in a, a tankier piece of gear because you get this yep uh, and then I do actually like the uh, the sorcery strike upgrade. It's a spell that she uses all the time. So um, you know, just getting rid of that uh, the the counters on maybe maybe you hit another Sephiroth with this, or you hit Bradley or whoever, then a melee unit or a physical unit on your team doesn't have to deal with that counter anymore. So yeah, it's it's good. It's fine. It's uh, it's nothing blowing me away or anything. No, same no same here. It's a nice power creep upgrade for her. Obviously, it's good things to have. The magic attack fifteen. I actually don't hate, but I don't love. I know one of the things that's kind of 
kind of a point where not everyone leans into but most times that i've seen we tend to turn her comet ability off if only because sorcery strike and dystopia are so disproportionately good compared to it that being said we're seeing so much more element res in the game that having that typeless magic attack is a real like nice ace in the hole but the downside of those is that you don't get your dark attack up because it's typeless damage so for them to give that magic attack 15 it sounds really small but it's it's a nice way to like bridge the gap between the damage output i still don't think it's enough though because the things that make sorcery strike and dystopia so good it's not their damage it's the imperil it's the stop yeah. effect it's the aoe so I don't, I don't think that's enough to really tip the scales yeah it's kind of it's, it's a good bonus and it, it applies to all of our attacks so not not gonna not gonna turn it away no definitely <laughs> not definitely not uh, i know that uh silma is getting an upgrade too I was I was pretty unimpressed with this one, pretty nonplussed with it. Same here. I, I, I looked at it. I honestly don't even remember. That's how not, you know uh, little I felt like we needed to talk about it. I don't think she's <laughs> kept up, per se, with the, the other units. But 20% magic. Oh, okay, cool. We like that, I guess. 15 defense. Uh, certainly nice enough, I guess. Uh, the skill upgrade, though, that she's getting is essentially increasing uh, the max HP and restoring HP of 25%. For herself and the ally that she moves toward it's a cross-shaped uh, teammate buff aoe and um not nearly impactful enough but i mean just doesn't do anything i've never been a big fan of these active hp buffs i've never really been able to get good leverage or or, or, or good value out of them i don't think how about you uh, I have occasionally, actually, uh, very sparingly, but there's a couple units where I know Astrius comes to mind as one of them. His one you don't always use because the courage is so much more important that sometimes you'll disable that teammate buff, but he comes to mind. I know the other one that I, this is kind of a, not a unique case, but he's made for it, is Immortals is on. Uh, one of my favorite things is uh, his limit break kind of leans into that, will give himself an HP increase. And I have sometimes used... Uh, elds or old uh, elds tmr which technically raises your tmr uh, your hp it's the same idea i've used it on sorrow in the past and the general idea is essentially just that you don't allow yourself to get killed as quickly by giving yourself an extra like 1200 or 1500 hp which is sizable enough and if you're talking about certain squishy units um it can help you survive or at least proc the courage but it's it's you, you, it's not very exciting it's not very exciting yeah it's not, you're not like necessarily like winning or losing a ton of battles it's just a nice thing nice but throw in. yeah yeah it's whatever so either way okay well that's what we have for the the uh transcendences and upgrades coming obviously there are some things we were talking about that we're looking forward to we will segue here to the war room now and we'll talk a little bit about uh limited guild war and class match uh the heinler cup just concluded at least one of them did you know obviously one phase of the manual tournament did and we have the arena uh bonus coming next week with the limited titles so we'll talk a little bit about uh limited guild war first and you're seeing on my screen here this is the uh forest two map this is a, a new map here that we've seen are you enjoying limited guild uh war so far or no uh yeah we had we had uh kind of a, a tough loss uh to start it off but um we're, we're back uh winning again it's a it's a cool map um you kind of got kind of this raised uh hill in the in the middle so it's good for uh, I, I think it's good for for missile units you can keep them back with kind of a limited movement i've i've had good success with both alaya and Jaden testing on this map so how about you how, how are things going so far so far so good I, i've done a couple things i've leaned mostly into lightning so far uh surprisingly so just because of, of how prevalent earth is but we also are using earth very prevalently that was my team for the first half of the week where uh we've been using our wall for for earth where uh bradley obviously just fits so well and throwing in like slime and moshery uh that's kind of what our jam has been and we're doing very well with that this map though i think is very cool it's uh for those kind of eyeballing it here the one thing about the topography of it where because there's some like hurdles here on the the height three and where that height zero is it does kind of run diagonally uh in terms of where the movement goes and i think I i've mentioned this for the last map too i love the two spaces here between two slots where you talk about bow tie units or some of those missile units that are move of two that you get that buff flexibility here that you know they can move two squares and still do their job but um yeah overall i don't think there's any like real wonky height things here obviously there's some topography to like mess with in the middle here where you are going from some like you know twos threes and fours but overall i don't think i've noticed it really impact 
my my you know team like going weird places or not using attacks and i think they should uh, i think the spacing is a pretty you know forgiving map where you get that one buff and go very rarely sometimes that second it depends on the hate but overall yeah yeah it's good good map have you have you tried out curry at all on this map i have not i actually just got him to the 140 uh, as of late but uh are i'm entertaining it more i think someone had brought up the idea of using the boy tmr on him as well which is the decrease ap flat so going for just the uh the goal of like reduce ap and the frostbite because although the frostbite yeah. lands usually they usually still get like one attack off before they're fully out so that roy tmr i think it's kind of fun to you know theory craft with yeah so that i was actually doing something along those lines mm. so basically what i tested was have curry lined up against king bradley and he just frostbites turn one lands that and bradley's basically out of the fight after that and then my other uh archer alaya i had her use roy's tmr ah and then just knock down everybody else's uh, ap yeah it was actually working super super well if you can you know make sure you get the curry up against bradley really definitely. shuts down his damage definitely yeah and it's been obviously fun we talk about with the total team cost being a limiter it allows some of these units to shine where uh you know their their kit really speaks for themselves and, and curry is one of them and alaya is one of them her buff and innate penetrations utility is just so strong um you know they do really really well i'm sure we'll see more of them as people kind of explore that and get away from the prototypical you know dark and earth that we've become accustomed to yeah all right, and then we have class match here as well, and I'll bring this up on the screen too. This again, kind of a newer map. This is a, a and I don't have the initial starting positions here because obviously you can start your team a whole bunch of different places. Other things here again: AOE res of twenty, nullify, toad, and disable. This is most definitely a little bit of a wonky map here when it comes to topography and walking around. Kind of some of the flank routes potentially on the side of the maps. Have you? I know you're doing manual for class match. I'm just assuming, and, and I'm sure I'm right. Have you been enjoying yeah. it so far? <laughs> yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. It, it was super super weird to have kind of we we had a couple of days and then they said Oops, we actually meant to re to to reset everybody back to the beginning yep which which i thought i remember actually reading the in the announcements and then they just forgot for, for whatever reason yep. so we had kind of a, a misfire there to start the season but yeah i'm, I'm having fun i'm i'm playing a water team oh. and yeah perrine miranda and uni oh and absolutely guess who has the most kills on my team it I mean, you're setting me up here. It's going to be uni, right? Like, I feel like that's... It's, yeah, uni, <laughs> uni is, is killing it. That's so funny. So. Uh, there's uh, there been a lot of people talking about him for obviously, like, good reasons with, with what he uh, what he does on that 120 ability. Um, well, shoot. the thing is, like, that it's in the rule set, they are allowing both Quicken and CT. So I'm just shutting it down. I don't want to deal with it. So <laughs> No, definitely not. For manual yeah. PvP in particular, that's obviously, like... You know the how you win it's it's the time uh, manipulation shenanigans good That's stuff working well so far good stuff so i'm actually glad they reset it at the beginning because i i initially came out of the gate and i'm like all right aoe res 20 gonna have some fun with this i'm gonna go hyo king mont and slime and basically jack up my aoe res which i did with the idea being that hyo has that ability where you can select two or select three i forgot which, which exactly but i uh, figured that was gonna be my trump card with mont going in for the berserk Basically disable everything, have Mop Berserk them. Heal comes in for the unit res, they heal up once or twice. I figured that'd be like easy. That team was awful in the, in the first three days. I tried so many iterations of it. None of them worked. And then they reset it and I went, whew, okay, I can finally like theory craft a new team. And so I did. I ended up going with uh, Bradley, regular Earth Mont. And you guys convinced me after our tier list from last week. For those of you watching that hadn't seen it, we did a limited Guild War MR rated tier list. I've been using Lorenzo as that third unit and having an absolute load of fun and a bunch of success climbing up the ranks so far. I think I'm like right on the edge of rank 100. I lost a bunch on the second day. I, I just completely screwed up. Uh, a couple different things on my my uh, positioning but so are you having him like haste and keen blade or i'm actually not kind of thing no not no? even i am actually so i'm i'm having him be kind of vanilla quite honestly where if you guys can see my cursor on the screen i'm essentially starting bradley up here in the very far corner i have regular mont here on like two squares down and then i actually have lorenzo like this uh, one of these squares right here with the idea being because of his jump 
I essentially have him buff once, which is the protect and that whole, like, you know, Dragoon buff. But the idea is essentially to have him move forward enough that he can maybe start baiting some people with Mont quickly diverting that hate as he moves in uh, a little closer. And I've honestly just been enjoying him using his Dragoon abilities where uh, that Dispel Courage, Dispel Re-Raise, and then Dispel Protect and Shell ability, uh, the fact that he's in the air for as long as he is means that he's not getting hit by things and quite frequently is one of the last characters surviving and obviously throw some pierce damage i'm using um you know the alpha Karis card for the unit res so he is benefiting from that and he's just doing good as the dragoon i haven't needed the the time nice. age stuff yet yeah no that's good like i think that um especially like if if the meta in auto is a lot of bradley's and things like he can dispel that courage so that that's uh helps out a lot i'm sure definitely definitely and yeah just throwing a wrench into the movement of things that i can appreciate where he does try to you know get ahead of things and and all of a sudden the fight is happening before you know it on the manual side i haven't seen any sort of one particular meta it's been kind of wild west there's i've seen dark i've seen lightning uh, fire earth really the only thing i think i i haven't seen is wind which i'm surprised you know because of the amount of uh, earth that's out there yeah i uh- I think I have two. I've seen a good smattering. I've seen a fair, mostly Earth, fair smattering of Dark. I think I might have seen one or two win teams, though. They were running the, uh, oh goodness, Dario, Ayaka, and like Glaciella kind of going for that sustain comp. And uh, I don't know how well that would fare, how far that would take you. I haven't seen as much Fire Vade, if only because I think the, the, the accuracy does seem to be everywhere. But also just from a unit cost perspective, um, it can be hard to fit that 100 cost Mont. Uh, you can't go triple evade theoretically, but I know there's just some complications with that, so... Got to bring Misha in there, <laughs> get the double CT down. Oh, so you almost convinced me too. Wait, I so on that first limited guild war, or I'm sorry, that first class match a couple days, I was throwing slime in there and slime was doing horrendously bad. I threw Misha in there and still did horrendously bad, unfortunately. <laughs> but yes, I actually yeah. took you up on that. I threw Misha in there as the third unit. Especially on auto, I think that, that uh, it's kind of hard to tune him because he's got like kind of, um, ex- if you use uh, Thief Lore, he's got the four movements. So. Yeah. You kind of got to throw bow tie on him if you have no tank or something. So that's what I was doing. I was bow tying, and then I would have him use the uh, the dark Leela uh, TMR, the you know acceleration to AOE the teammate, kind of what Slime does, so the same function. The problem, though, his range on his uh, abilities was just like one square too far for me, where I wish uh, you know he was attacking a smidge too early. But yeah, you learn. But that speaking of like the the PvP stuff, like did you happen to catch the Heinler? pvp cup over the weekend uh, i unfortunately did and i say that because it was like freaking three in the morning uh, i woke up on a whim <laughs> and i just happened to check the discord and everyone's obviously talking in the middle of the night and yeah I was, I was up for like two hours and i uh, just watching it it was very interesting i don't watch much manual pvp did you i'm assuming you had did you watch or no yeah actually i was i did a little uh, impromptu stream where i was kind of doing some commentary on it and nice uh, a bunch of like the hardcore um you know manual pvps came in and hang out so yeah it was a lot of fun i, I think i might continue to do that kind of in in the future uh for some of those so yeah yeah that again was stayed brutal. up way too late like the the time zone thing was brutal but uh we still had still had a good time yeah it was very cool you know I, two units that came out that i think most people don't think of on the finals there the dark side was regular stern og stern and then on the earth side it was urel where i think most people just don't consider them uh, for for pvp if not even manual pvp but obviously there's a lot of high iq things that they do there that uh, function quite well yeah urza rage congrats to him i've, I've uh, known him for a long time uh he's a he's a great player so good luck to him in the finals uh, isvar is another friend of mine actually too from the manual pvp server uh, he had some tough luck there where he disconnected in a game that i think yes. that he actually was in line to win so yep uh, i feel feel bad for him but uh he played great they both did so yeah Excited to see more in the future. Me too, for sure, for sure. And honestly, the production, I, I thought uh, I thought RNJ did a really good job shoutcasting. I know it's difficult to shoutcast a manual PvP because you're going from auto to manual. You have to think totally different. And then they just do things that most people wouldn't think of in terms of timing where you land if you're jumping in the sky or, or where you move or how you chain certain pe- people down. It's very hard to shoutcast uh, that kind of thing. So I think they did well. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was too bad there was kind of like some some spectator bugs where they kind of fell off the the spectator a few times. Yep. But they seemed to clear it up as it, as the night went on. So yep. I'm looking forward to the uh, the YouTube edit when they put everything together. 
Yeah, me too. Me too. Good. And then just an honorable mention, they are doing another limited title in Arena next week. This was super competitive last time for people to farm those titles. I have no doubt it'll be the same. I am curious to see what they end up doing for the bonus unit. It's got to be regular. I'm sorry, it's going to be the new Stern, I would think. But I don't... Do they announce other bonus units? I feel like I might have seen that, but I recall. Yeah, the, it's it's in the notices. Um, Stern is the 100% bonus. Yep. Bradley, I think, is going to be 75%. And then there was a there was a bunch of others for seventy five percent, so it's probably all like the FMA stuff. Yep. Maybe yep. some of the FFBE units that are getting upgraded this week will be in there too. Yep. I competed the last time they did this a, a few months ago, and yeah, you you you're, you got to be up at the reset to to get those games in right at the end of the night. So it's it's not for the faint of heart. No. I managed to to break into the top ten and, and got a, a pretty cool title last time i don't don't know if i'm going to do it again (laughs) Uh, me neither i'll see what happens honestly i'll I'll just give it a a test on day one or two if it's easy enough you know i'll i'll go as long as i can before it becomes too much of a burden but you got to spend a bunch of viz too for refreshing so tons of viz yep keep that in mind definitely so good all right well that brings us now to the leona spy report where we talk a little bit about the jp things at this point i think we'll focus mostly on some of the things we know we do know of dark shiva that seem to just get released uh, obviously we don't know the metrics about what she does per se but water and ice energy but one thing we haven't talked about yet is uh, celebratory Jaden, which is the new uh, pierce ice unit that they ended up coming out with he also has a, a unique weapon that they made for his release as well i know you've probably had a little bit of time to digest him as a character now uh thumbs up thumbs down any thoughts he's he's pretty good like i don't know if he's like the best thing i've ever seen but i think there have i've seen a lot of complaints like uh, from people saying oh now now they can dispel my my undispellable hate now or my innate hate and they and have been kind of upset about that but i think it's actually a good thing because i think the tanks have become too good and too powerful again and I think that it's good to have a unit that can can kind of take that back down a notch. I think we've gotten maybe a little bit too comfortable with uh, the undispellable hate. And I think it makes you feel, I think it makes you think a little bit differently too about, you know, maybe some of the active abilities that, that generate hate and some of the older tanks maybe now uh, are a little bit more interesting than some of the newer ones that can't regen hate after they lose it. Yep. There, there's uh, kind of that back and forth to, to think about. He's, he's obviously, he's cool that uh, he's got another magic pierce unit. And he's like a true magic pierce unit, kind of similar to uh, to Dialdo. Yep. He's got a little bit of chaining, like he, he can he can break barriers. He, they they kind of I think tried to make him a little bit of a bruiser, like that's his survivability mechanic is that he can restore some HP. He can reduce like slash res penetration for uh, for the enemy, and then he's got like a huge barrier, the biggest one that that we've ever seen. Ten k HP. Yep. <laughs> yep. Kind of a cool bruiser. Fits in I think well to the ice element and what they like to do kind of a sustain and bruise game absolutely i'm definitely excited for him if only for some of those things you mentioned i know one of them he's also got 10 percent all elemental res which you've seen how potent that can be um hate is still right now one of the at least from an auto pv perspective one of the best things you can do to manipulate and whether um it's increasing your own hate obviously that was 1.0 when we saw tanks you know being able to buff their own hate 2.0 was the innate hate which will you know undispellable they did start with 3.0 from what i can tell has been hate down it's the opposite where it's the idea that like okay well my tank can't generate the hate that's fine i'll just make my unit go hate minus six and then you still maintain the distance at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how much hate your tank has it matters how much they have relative to who's next in line second but here at the 4.0 being able to decrease that enemy hate obviously goes a long way where not every unit has 10 hate to start or 12 hate to start even if it's five hate to start um being able to essentially ignore that i think puts a huge wrench in some of the innate strength of many characters that there is no counterplay for currently there's literally no counterplay for snow's starting hate or alphonse's starting hate this i think is actually a nice door open for that I think the other thing too that, that people should think about is that at least in the auto game, there's no guarantee that he's actually going to use this attack like to kind of lead off. Uh, you know, you can get creative by you know how you set your team up that you know maybe he's going to prefer to use an AOE attack rather than this uh, single target on, onto the tank. So you know, but depending on on how things are are kind of working out there, maybe he doesn't use it until a couple hits into the battle or, or something like that. So yeah. the other thing I, I want to mention too is uh, Kefka's ability with the give hate to multiple units now becomes i think a lot more interesting where um, you know he can there, there's sort of a backup plan you know once the tank loses hate so i, I kind of think that's uh, aging pretty well now too in, in light of this 
Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, that's his, his weapon they're giving him too, I think is very interesting. For those that mm-hmm. haven't seen it, it's another uh, element specific um, one. Again, there's not many ice pierce units, there's enough, but uh, it's not their not their strength per se, but it's wind resistance, light resistance, dark resistance of 10%, which is awesome for having, you know, three elements there. Obviously, two of the meta ones and, and wind being the counter element is just helps ice kill it quicker and save their resources. I think it's a, a great spear obviously magic oriented another reason why you wouldn't put it on you know ice spear units just because it's a magic oriented one then again element resist is that strong maybe you would and uh just go for go for an attack build where there is a version of it that does have a nice strong attack stat too so pretty interesting that with the all element passive and the weapon he's going to be sitting at 40 percent wind 20 and then 20 percent to everything else other than fire yep. or not everything else but at least uh, those three those three elements yeah I definitely like this kind of age of elemental resistance. We're going to see that, I think, coming in with Astria soon, too. Um, I'm sort of kind of uh, holding my breath a little bit for for the next unit that's going to come and, and sort of break that new meta. Yeah, the <laughs> el- elemental resistance penetration. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. And then the last thing we'll talk about on JP is actually a very awesome uh, change. They've reduced the cost of all job-based division cards by 10. Magnificent. Huge. Yeah, huge. And, and particularly, I even think for like some of the sub-slot play where we're seeing that now with limited Guild War, that also reduces what it costs to put in the sub-slot. I think it drops down to 42 cost, uh, but it's 60 cost. Uh, otherwise to put into a regular slot i think that's a really great balance change where obviously they're not as plug and play as the elemental ones they don't have the same impact as the elemental ones were not every not every job based vision card has like an aoe or a unit res or a 15 percent. and even if they do it doesn't overlap with enough units to be prevalent so i think this is a really nice balance for them to reduce the cost to you know, essentially cheapen what is most often just a sub vision card slot. At the end of the day, that's that's what they seem to be. I think that's maybe even in JP that um, Gumi is noticing that people are still kind of very entrenched in the mono elements meta. And, you know, this is sort of, at least for limited cosplay, this is a way to kind of promote more rainbow play a little bit. I'm wondering, like, if, if they're going to be, like, another shoe to drop, like, in terms of multi-element. If, are they going to add, you know, some kind of group party buff, like, you know, or something else? Because even at this point, like, and I know we said we said earlier that, you know, things are starting to open up. But I, I feel like they're, they're still just a little bit more needed to kind of really kind of kick it into high gear. I don't yep. know, what do you think? Same. And, and I think part of that, too, is some of the mastery abilities where I've always said this. I don't think it's as potent as people think it is it's the extra hp and element attack you give to teammates it's nice it's strong but i don't think it's enormous to, to the point where like you know it, you have to do it but i think a, an interesting tweak they could do is to upgrade that mastery ability so that it's not just of the same element but of the same class so like if you're a mace user have an ma where all other mace units get 10 percent hp and 15 percent you know whatever kind of attack i want to see magic attack That'd be kind of hard to narrow down, but you kind of get my idea there where um, if they really are struggling to break away from that, I feel like that's a really simple change uh, yeah, to align I, that. I would, lo- I would love that. Yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to our last segment here. We don't have any active Q&A at the moment, but we did. At least I, don't know, I saw an interesting conversation going on on RNJ's Discord about the worst units in the game. We, we JB and I are like kind of optimists in the sense that we don't typically talk a lot of crap about characters. We'll, we'll be realistic and we'll be honest, but we don't ever really get to trash characters. Uh, so this is a nice chance for us to, to vent and let loose a little bit. Um, we do have five characters and, and there are four stipulations here on our grading that I need to make sure that everyone's aware of. Number one, the character must have a confirmed 140 and JP or obviously on the roadmap. If they're permanent pool character, they're going to get one. It's more for like the 2B that's not guaranteed. They're not they're, they're not part of this. Uh, number two, the character must be 80, 90, or 100 cost. While there are URs who are 70 cost, they very obviously are meant to be lower in terms of impact, so we'll omit them from the grading scale. The third thing here is that not just auto PvP, but also theoretically manual PvP, but it should also be for their PvE potential and even the TMR. The idea of these five worst characters should be that if you pull them, your immediate reaction should be, wow, literally nothing about this character can i use that should be the takeaway that even if it's a good tmr that's still like a saving grace and the fourth condition here is that no selection quest units either because those obviously aren't tuned to be exactly as strong because they're technically free uh, in the game so those are our, our four stipulations here where uh, i think this gives some interesting 
talk. So for now, I'm going to list the five. It's not in any order worse to Worcester or, or anything like that. <laughs> I'm sure we'll come to a consensus at the end of what the rank might actually be, but I'll just go through my five. And so the, the first character that I'm going to put on here and I feel really strongly about is uh, Prompto as my first awful character. The, the TMR, not great. PVE usage, eh, barely existent, not there. Even considering Dark, how many options there are. He literally does nothing. He's a horrendously bad evade unit. Uh, not nearly enough damage. I, I don't see like any silver lining or upside or usage for him whatsoever. So, so I, I actually have Prompto like among my list, but I didn't actually put him into my top five. So uh, I can definitely see it. I do have kind of fond memories of him because uh, of the FF15 trial that, mm. that uh, I actually placed first in and I, I used him extensively. So Nice. All right, yeah. so I'm sorry, sorry to hard stop. hard for me to see him there, but yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the next one I've kind of finally come to accept it here is Eld. I think this character uh, has not aged well. His 120 upgrade is not great. Statistically, just inferior. Pierce uh, attack has not done well in the game. He's had some AI issues with his limit break. Uh, this is you go down the list. His TMR it does have a nice evasion stat on it, which I actually have used for like evasion shutstone. And like min maxing my evade units, but man, this character doesn't offer a, a lot. He's kind of in that Eileen bucket for like a lot of the downsides. Yeah, they they just happen to have the same job too. The the Lancer job is yeah probably one of the worst ones. So yep. yep. And they they try to kind of make him this weird kind of tank thing, like with his limit burst, with the hate and everything. And he's not quite tanky enough to do it. He has the one move that he's supposed to kind of like get his HP back, like after he gets low, but. I don't think it really works out in, in practice unless you're manually controlling him. So. Yep, I would agree. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, the other unit I'll throw on here, which I was kind of sad, but I think, I, being honest, it makes sense, is actually Kilfay, regular Earth Kilfay. Uh, I think a lot of the Earth casters have surpassed her in such an enormous degree that I don't see any upside to her. The Staff Mage job is okay, but it's not a overpowering job, and her bulk and survivability, which was kind of her you know, go-to back in the day isn't nearly the same. Her TMR is really strong, but also really weak. It's a, like a unit res, but also an AOE imperil on yourself. Uh, overall, I, I I don't think she's aged as well and, and just kind of falls behind in the broad scheme of things. Yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't see her in, in auto. We haven't for, for a long time until she sort of killed off Orlando and Venera. Yep. But she has been very, very good in uh, Kason's WDL League. Oh. My guildmate, uh, my guildmate Ram Nine has has her on the squad, and he's in the finals right now. And big big part of it due to her. So uh, I couldn't actually put her on on my list, but I, I can see your points for sure. That's fair. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, all right, and then rounding out my last two here. One of this one, I'm, I was kind of on the fence, but I actually I'm I semi confident in this is actually Lastwell Ice Lastwell. There was a time where PvE content, I do think he was really good. He's got that Ice Apparel. He's got some double hits. But I think uh, it's not as good as it used to be. I mean, obviously, that kind of PvE is a little more niche. Uh, Guild Raid, I have not seen him be one of the prevalent units. Uh, maybe once in a while, but not for top scores, from what I can tell. And then, like, TMR-wise, it's kind of whatever. But his, his auto PvP is kind of a mess. He's not nearly evasive anymore. And what made him special with the Mirage is... Kind of a dime a dozen with many characters now as part of the MA2s. I just don't think he's aged well at all uh, and very limited for like, you know, range and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. He pretty much since um, the like ice missile chainers came out, uh, he kind of lost his spot uh, on the like, you know, on the best guild raid team you can do for ice. But, you know, if, if like the slash resistance ever is kind of the one to go for in the future, like he still, he can still hang like on, on those. Definitely. I know I used him. For, there was a TOR at one point where uh, he was definitely like one of the most important units. And that's what to say. He, PVE is probably his only upside, in my opinion, um, of all those things. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for that. I don't, I don't know if we're ever going to get mono elements cards ever again, but it'd be nice if they sort of finished off the uh, the the ice evasion kind of, um, you know, builds. They, I mean, obviously they started off early with Shiva, but they never gave us the, uh, the card for ice, yep. which would be would be really nice if they could get one. Absolutely, they need it, yeah. And then the fifth unit here, this one is a very tough one, quite honest, because at this point there's a lot of units who I do think are very bad, but they do have some PvE upside, just some quick ones off the top of my head. I was considering Howlet 
the Wind Howlet as one of them, but excellent PvE usage for what he has in the apparel. Uh, Wind Lucia as well, but her quadage is a great PvE unit as well. Uh, kind of going on the list, I know there's a Wind trend here. Uh, Uldoa was on my initial list, but her TMR I think is very good that I, I don't want to put her here. And then even Yerma, I have no longer put on this list. Again, the idea of like TMR and PvE potential. I don't think she could PvE unit see the best ones, but at least I think the TMR and her recent upgrades have been enough to kind of give her the edge here. I do still think uh, Eileen is probably the fifth worst here. <laughs> I, I think I, I think this new Transcendence does not do it, but uh, I'm pretty confident of that. So one thing that some people don't realize is that Eileen is 70 cost. Oh, wait, you know why? Can I tell you a funny story? I actually, I have a fifth unit here, but I kind of just walked back on it live. I decided to change my mind. I, I figured Eileen was my next <laughs> next off. My 80 cost dude, this is going to surprise, I think surprise a lot of people. Frederica. I think my, wow. yeah. You know why? She's just fallen so far between what lightning can do and she's so squishy the missile units that are overpowering she doesn't have as much in common with them anymore and uh i again process elimination is kind of what it is now that i don't think she's fared well like what made her special the barrage and whatnot is kind of like mundane at this point sharpshoot like ooh, ooh sharpshoot wow <laughs> you know what i mean like it's, just, it's kind of whatever for me yeah she had, she had a, pr a pretty long reign like she was so our long. first banner unit i, I believe uh, yep. if i remember correctly and she was very, very solid for a long time. Very even good. like even like after Final Fantasy thirteen came in and with like Lightning and Cloud, she was in there like um and kind of came back a bit again. But yeah, I haven't really seen her much these days. So Yep. Yeah, can't yep. fault you there. No. Nope. Yeah, even I think it was like six, eight months ago, maybe uh, a VIP ran eight to what you just mentioned. It was uh Lightning from thirteen, Cloud and Frederica. And it was the most one of the most overpowering walls I've ever seen run. Nothing could beat it. It's just raw destruction. But the game is not that game anymore. Yeah, there's certain maps where like barrage is, especially if you can string off a couple of them with with multiple units. It's uh, you just hit everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just the chaining alone kind of does the work. Definitely. So all right. So then that's that's my five again. No particular order. Uh, but I'm very interested now to see how far far off or close to some of yours. So first on my list, I have Eld here. We 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 kind of went through him. Yep. Um, you know his his deficiencies. I think speak for himself. I do know Isvar, who was in the uh, manual tournament. That is one of his favorite units. So sorry to uh, to Isvar, but I think in deep in his heart, he knows it to be true. Yep. My second one, and maybe this might be surprising. I'm gonna put Golbez on the list. Oh, a decent case. I like it. Yep. Golbez, I feel like, is a unit that like a, like a lot of people were super hyped for, and he just like never did anything. I, I've you know I've seen people try to use him in manual, didn't work out. Seen people try to kind of use him against that light meta that was going on when he was released, couldn't do anything. Yeah. So I've, you know his TMR, I don't think is all that great either. Not a lot of uh, units can use it. So yeah, I I don't uh, have a strong counter argument. I, I I would agree with you. I don't I don't think of him as one of the top five worst. But when I think of like when would I use him and is it feasible? It, he just falls second fiddle to both Dark Lucia and Dark Fina. Uh, and even then you have characters like uh, Garvel, other dark you know magic units that have other kinds of upside. I would agree. He's a tough sell for me. Yeah, I think it's valid. See, what, what happened was is I had a bunch of units that kind of fell off the list because of some of the restrictions. So like Oldoa, who, who you also mentioned, like very good TMR. Uh, Ziza was obviously, she's, if it's just looking at the unit itself, trash. So yep. uh, her TMR saves her. Prompto actually was on my list that kind of, I, I took him out just because of uh, some of those considerations too. But then like a bunch that don't have kind of, don't fit those restrictions either, like Winter Ramada, Luartha, Winter Venera, Summer Lilith, like some of them are very good at PVE. So yes. I couldn't put them on my list. Yep. So then, yeah, I started looking at some other units and Golmez came up. I agree. Number three is uh, Varouche. Oh, this I... is a this is another unit that I've just never seen used in a good way. Interesting. His kind of niche of like very high spirit. By the time that he had was released in the game, I feel like spirit penetration was was kind of just already everywhere and couldn't really do a lot. 
he did get helped out quite a bit by like the Kodadama, the Kodadama upgrades, because like accuracy was another issue for him. But even since then, like and even like with Earth coming back, I I, I really can't see him doing anything against Bradley or, or Dialdo. To no post third anniversary, Varush has no business competing with any of these <laughs> units. I mean that that's definitely clear. I in my heart, I don't think he's one of the top five worst, but. I don't have a good argument why he shouldn't be there either. I just, I when every time I've used him, I've used him and been, oh, wow, he did better than I thought. Like, or, oh, like, he was actually really important here. Even if I didn't, like, have an overpowering team where it was amazing, he constantly, like, still proved value. Whereas I know, like, some of, I, I think some of the others I've looked at here, like, they just have no value. They just get stomped. At least I think he puts up the fight, but I can see why someone would go there, particularly where, like, wind is not that st- Magic scaling slashes are hard to build for. They're not. But uh, I don't know. I'd be intrigued to give another go. You get Dark Remu here now too, which is the 50% magic for wind. And uh, I'm intrigued. I, I mean, again, post their anniversary, low hopes. But, He's uh, going to need like a banger. I, I Well, I guess he doesn't have his 140 yet in GP, so mm. maybe he's actually invalid for the list. Not, but he's a, yeah. he's a regular unit, so I mean, he'll get it soon, I yeah. would think. Yeah, yeah. Nope, but like fair. he's always had like the AP thing, like you know he's a magic caster that you know doesn't have you know any any good AP mm. bank to start out with, so a lot of like deficiencies I, I think for him. That's fair. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, oh. Number four, Mediana. Now, obviously, like this is a character that has like a storied history. There was a time where like she was everywhere and was all over the game, even in manual PvP. Like there was she has like poison mist that she can like jump across the map and bomb people. So that was something that we did. Uh, in manual all the time but have not seen her anywhere in the game in a very very long time she's my fourth i was gonna put her on those if i could one thing that kept her off for me was her tmr i actually still see it used relatively frequently in trials of reckoning where her tmr is a really good one to get that quick attack magic and i think is it is it acquired ap off the top of my head i can't remember exactly yeah 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 you get acquired ap yeah it's just one of those ones where i seen it used so often in trials of reckoning for how forgiving it is she got bumped off my list but if not for that 10 billion percent one of the wars i agree it's it's still a pretty good tmr i haven't used it in a while but no yeah, definitely have you definitely have used it in, in the past for sure no i i know hopes tmr has kind of replaced it from like a, a damage you know output perspective but yeah well he's actually my last one hope oh, <laughs> it's a good one that's a i don't yeah. know why i didn't put him here he should be bottom five i don't think his tmr is good enough that that i would keep him off the list like i like the the attack and magic boost like it's it's a little bit better than cecil's because this one i think it's 40 percent rather than 30 percent. he just i know that he's actually started getting some play in jp recently since uh, he got his 140 upgrades um i'm interested to see if that will come to fruition over here because I'm still personally not all that impressed with him. No. But yeah. <laughs> no, not even close. Um, I, I think he's a valuable bottom five unit. I would agree with you there. So, all right. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have some slight reconciling to do. I mean, obviously, we both agree on Eld being here. I, I feel really strongly about Prompto, if that's okay. I know he was on your fringe. But if I had to pick no, one, I'm, to keep... I'm okay. I'm okay with Prompto being there. Because he was, he was within my top, like eight or ten so yeah uh, that he wasn't that's not too far off yeah i don't know if i'm confident in any of my other picks here to say they they are worse than yours <laughs> um i'm i'm hesitant to pick verush i think just out of this list of 10 he probably falls out of that five for me man i don't want to do this but like i think i have to i think i gotta pick Golbez here with you i really do so one thing I'll say is Golbez and Hope were both on our list of worst units of 2022 when we did that stream. So, yep. yeah. At least that's consistent. <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't, I hate to do it too, but I got to put Hope. It's just, it's true. At least for now, like maybe there's still some hope, you know, no pun intended with the, with the 140 and MA2, but, you know, I always had kind of, you know, some, some interest in the character, you know, just because he has like some, some interesting buffs and, and things, but just haven't been able to make it work. No. And then when I consider what they did with uh, the new Stern and then Bart's in the future, it's not like Hope has any like, you know, oh, fun theory crafting with them. Like he doesn't, he's got nothing to do with them. So uh, I think that's a big demerit for me in rounding down here. So who's who's going to be the fifth here? Do you have any strong opinions uh, who definitely should be the fifth Oof. worst unit? I mean, just thinking about like characters that I've used most recently, like it's probably Frederica, like, you know, like in the months after uh, Final Fantasy 13. I mean, that's not that long ago, like within the last four to five months. 
uh, maybe six months. I just never see her making a comeback. Oh man, and she it... already has her 142, so she's kind of at where she's at. Yeah. Oh man, Kilf is a good candidate, but you bring up the draft league. Let me question that. No, I think Fred. I see more upside for Kilf than I do for Fred. I think I think that's solid. So you like you you like Mediana TMR more than Frederica? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Point. Wait, you bring up a really good point. No, I don't. I don't. If I if I could lose one of them, I think it would be Mediana's TMR. Yeah, no, nah, you're totally right. It, <laughs> it is a very common TMR, but not common enough in PvE that it's worth offsetting how bad she actually is. Like, so horrendously bad that a, a TMR that's useful once a year on a couple runs is not enough to salvage her. Um, I mean, I've, I've upgraded her and tried to use her multiple times, but... Way too squishy. Yeah, it's. I mean, when you compare like the upgrades that they gave to Skahal to compared to M- Mediana, like it's night and day. Yep. Both black mages, eighty costs. Right. Right. <laughs> well, shoot. So if we had to give these give these a ranking, then I mean, I don't know if we have to, but I, we can uh, quickly attempt here. I I feel like since we came to a consensus on Eld, he's got to be the worst. Is this? <laughs> is, that, is that feel right? The, o- the only time that I've ever seen him used in PvP, like auto PvP, was like right after like the first anniversary like when Oron and Gilgamesh was a thing yes that's what I made my video about him I was the only time I ever used him yeah but I don't think I've ever seen him outside of that nope I would agree so, all right so he's the worst uh next I would I think in my heart I have to put Midiana she's like that bad and to be yeah. fair because I left her off because of the TMR I might have had her in my bottom five initially so she's she's right there with him for sure I think the third one here I think might have to be Prompto for me quite honestly is I'm okay with I'm I'm yeah I'm okay, I'm okay with that because he was like amongst my bottom units. I don't think that his TMR like I think is really bad too. Like the camera thing, right? I've I've never used that in, in anything. Well, so it's it's hate down and it's CT of two fifty and it's like well hate down. There's like four TMRs that do hate down and CT of two fifty. Dude, characters get that for free nowadays. Like it's not a, you know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um. So get I get that on their attacks now. Yeah. Right. Well, because in my my tiebreaker for hope, who I I think hope is probably fourth year for me. I think Goldbez is fifth. Hope at least I, I feel pretty confident with the uh, upside of like, oh, there is like the time mage benefits and uh, light is tuned for a strong magic and his magic attack is actually really high. Like he actually can do some really good damage. So I don't want to like he can, if he can hit anything. Right, the accuracy is horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. But yeah, yeah, and then and then I think five. I'm comfortable doing Goldbez. I think that's a. They're pretty solid. What about year. what about the the Golbez versus Kilfe comparison? Like, would you would oh, you take sorry. Golbez over Kilfe? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. I think I think I probably would put Kilfe rather than Golbez there. And again, just kind of highlighting, I think most people have misunderstood exactly now at this point how we're supposed to use him. At one point, we thought it'd be like a really fun, just like bulky bruiser that never dies, and that's just not the case anymore. We know for a fact that. When he first came out, the Sorcerer and Black Armor, we saw defense and spirit of 30, and we saw, like, values in the 60s and 70s pop off the screen, but, like, that's obviously not viable. Like, even with the defense pen and spirit pen doesn't really matter. So, like, I think if you rethink this character, he's not as bad. Again, you have a spirit in peril, which does go well with other dark units. He's got to spell auto-revive. He doesn't have enough spear penetration between this attack and, and his passive. We talked about Abyssal Kazar here, where it's got um, a chance to inflict silence, which does have its upsides against other casters. I know his the limit break here... I always really liked for like counter dark elements where you get that that dark res 25 the one thing i hate i that i've wanted is the scholar sub job where i've always wanted umbral calling to work better than it did can never get it to work right because i think this buff is exceptionally strong if you could use it reliably but outside of yeah. that you know green mage obviously has its upsides and there's too much here on paper that kill fate just doesn't have on paper i I'm, I'm sort of rethinking that like when, when i was putting my list together you know the kind of what we talked about him last year kind of uh, in the context of 2022 was, was still kind of in my mind so but when i look at those two units next to each other i would definitely take a gold bez over kill face so what yeah i think she probably deserves to be there it's just, it's just too vanilla of a kit with not enough to actually lean into her job because he's technically bulkier than she is, I think. Think. Uh, I might come down to HP. I, I don't exactly recall what her HP gets up to, or, or his, for that matter, to be honest. That's there honest. is some upside, I think, with his uh, with his 140 coming too that would, would would kind of recontextualize things. That's a good point. And yeah, the upgrade for those that didn't see it, it's a 10% HP increase, 30 reaction block rate, which again, those are like power creep. Uh, it's not a not a huge thing. 
Oh, I like that. The decreased defense pen, 30 for targets. For a character like him, I like, because he's a high defense character. And that chance to inflict immobilize, obviously really strong too. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I do wish that they had um, changed that passive to just be permanent 30 defense and spirit rather than... I, I don't think that's out of whack, you know, compared to passives that we see now. It's no. not really that big a deal. No. I don't no. know. Because when because this one actually only becomes two turns like Correct. in battle. like So it's, it's like, wow, that's so unimpactful. It is. It is. No, but at this point, I feel like the, the first one here that magic and HP, and then I think obviously, well, he, he probably needs the accuracy, he's very inaccurate. There's a couple you could pick from, I guess, either way. So we'll those run. those are the five, I guess, that we came up with for now. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I, I think that's pretty representative. Again, we had some honorable mentions, but TMRs saved them from the chopping block. PVE saved them from the chopping block. But these are the five characters that if you pulled them, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, crap, I can literally do nothing with them. This is useless. <laughs> Literally useless. <laughs> that, that was sort of the, the the tough thing with this conversation is that, like I said, there was a bunch of units that I would totally have on this list before many of these if, you know, they weren't so good in PvE or, right. or if they didn't have such a great TMR. So right. cool, cool uh, thought exercise for sure. It was. All right, cool. Well, on that note, that wraps up everything we wanted to talk about for tonight. We have some interesting stuff coming this week as we continue with Limited Guild War and Class Match and new characters and all these new transcendences and what we're looking forward to with global exclusives and who knows what, but that's all we got for now. So, uh, JB, any closing thoughts? Yeah, good luck to the folks out there pulling for Reagan this week and good luck uh, finishing out strong in your Limited Guild War and Class Match. Absolutely. Good luck. Have a good night, everybody. We'll talk to you all soon. Mm-hmm.